I now understand why people love this book. It's not that I didn't like it, but also I didn't like it. Weird ass premise, but I bloody enjoyed it. Emily Henry has done it again, and guess what she did again? I'll tell you in a bit. Hi, hey, hello! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, for today's video, I'm gonna go through all the Emily Henry books. Well, all the Emily Henry books that my library had, which is a few, so, you know. <laughs> Sit back, relax, and, um, yeah, if you want to skip any of the books and stuff, there shall be time hops, time hops, time stamps down below, so feel free to do whatever. Uh, let's get into it. Book Lovers by Emily Hendry. We follow Nora. Nora is a cutthroat literary agent. She is, well, basically she is, as explained in the beginning of the book, she is the evil villain in all the romance books. She is the one that gets dumped for the little small town girl from wherever and that it's exactly how this book starts yes she is dumped by her boyfriend who's just off to small town wherever uh and decides that you know what this girly here that's the girly for me so you know i'm gonna break up with you over the phone the love interest of the book, we see him pretty straight on. So while Nora is getting dumped on the phone, she is on her way to meet Charlie. Now Charlie is, well, I don't know what best word to explain what he is, kind of. He's an editor. He's an editor with a gift for creating bestsellers. Let's just take what said's on the back, so yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, both of them kind of have a reputation for being, uh, let's say, pretty hardcore and cutthroat, as Nora is explained as. Um, so when she's late and he's like, ooh, yeah, I don't like people being late. That's the vibe she's getting from him. Turns out there's a completely different reason why he's like, oh, you're late, are ya? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we get that first introduction. Very like, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Basically their meeting is because Nora, um, she has a client, an author, who's looking for an editor and she's like pitched this book to Charlie, the editor. Um, basically he's like, this book is shit. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste my time on it. Fast forward like two years or so and um, this book is now a bestseller and is about to be turned into a movie and stuff. The book, not this book, but the book, the bestseller book in the book. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's, takes place in this, what's it called again, Sunshine, Sunshine Falls. Basically it's supposed to be this picturesque kind of a place. It's not really, as it turns out, yeah. So uh, Nora's sister, she's like pregnant, about to have her like third kid or so, and she's like, um, you know what, this is the time of year, July, July-ish, yeah. July-ish where, you know, you say you don't really have much to do anyway because publishing kind of shuts down and stuff. So, you know what, let's go to Sunshine Falls because Nora's sister is this, like, romance devourer thing. She loves all the romance books and stuff and she, uh, this, whatever the book was called, I don't remember, but the one in the Sunshine Falls, um, <laughs> she loves this book, so she's like, you know what, let's go, let's go for a little trip and spend some time there. So they go for like a month's stay or whatever. First day Nora's there, she's like, ooh, I, uh, yeah, okay. I hope my sister's not gonna be disappointed with the non-picturesque kind of feel this, this town is giving. Basically it's giving the everything is falling apart kind of vibe. She's standing in line at this coffee shop waiting to get a coffee and she's like, surely, not surely 
that is not Charlie standing in front of me. Oh, but it is. It is. So the reason why Charlie felt that book was shit was basically because it was set in his hometown of Sunshine Falls. Who would have known? Who would have known? It's a good book. I love this book. This was a lot of fun. I love how, I mean, we begin this book and being all like, yes, I am the villain of the book, but also this is my book, so, <laughs> you know. It had such a strong start and was so funny that I was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, read this until forever. So I read like half the book <laughs> in one sitting until I literally uh, started falling asleep because it was like 3 a.m. Um, yeah, don't start a book late at night or you know very very early morning and it you realize it's it's a good book so you just continue reading it. It had me hooked from the start. I would have probably finished the whole book in one go had I not had a very long day and was like falling asleep to begin with. I bloody loved it. Bloody loved it. Cannot wait to one day reread this book. That's my take. Yes. Every year, Poppy and Alex go on a holiday together, vacation. And they have done for a very long time until something happens. But what you say, I'm not going to tell, <laughs> evil. They are basically the polar opposites of one another, whereas she is like a wild child, always on the go. Alex is very much a down-to-earth, just relaxed dude, more or less, more or less, more or less. There's, I mean, no one is just the one thing, but that's basically the gist of it, yeah. This book, I don't know. So, it's not that I didn't like it, but also I didn't like it. The writing in it is very good, um, and the little snippets here and there. It's just that we jump in time, back and forth, back and forth, so many times, I couldn't keep track of what year we were in, and it just got lost and confused. I don't know. I don't know a better way to have done this book either. It's not like, I mean, it does have, um, so it does say like this summer or nine years ago, this summer, I just get nine this summer <laughs> all of a sudden. But, so, but it keeps jumping back and forth and I couldn't keep track of it. I mean, the chapters aren't that long either. So, I guess maybe the chapters were too short for the jumps. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I liked the snippets while while we were in them. But then, yeah, it, it was the jumping back and forth that got me. And I don't know. I don't know if I could have liked it if it was written in a different way. Because I like the characters. I like what happens. But then because we're jumping back and forth, I couldn't keep track of, like, the timeline of everything. This is going to be a miss for me, sadly. Maybe if I reread it, because I will already know everything, and I'll figure things out faster. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, well, you win some, you lose some. Let's see if I can get these names right, because they were a lot. They were a lot. So, we followed Daphne. So, Daphne was was together with Peter, they were about to get married, but then, you know, in the, um, what's it called? Not the honeymoon, the thing you do before the marriage, the bachelor party thingy. So, um, <coughs> Peter's, like, best friend of many, many years, uh, Petra, Peter and Petra, why do you try to confuse me? So Petra decides that this is the last time, uh, last chance I have to confess my love. So what happens? Peter dumps Daphne for Petra. So now Daphne is living with <laughs> Petra's ex, Miles. So ex-fiance's 
new fiance, because yeah, Petra and Peter are about to get married. Of course they are. They've known each other like all their lives. They've been together like five minutes, so of course they're getting married. Um, so yeah, ex-fiance, new fiance, ex-boyfriend is her new match made in heaven. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Anyway, so, um, Daphne and Miles, uh, they, they, they're living their separate lives. It's fine. They're living their separate lives in the same flat, just chilling. But then, <laughs> one day, this marriage, <laughs> this marriage, this wedding invitation arrives, one for each of them saying, welcome to the marriage of Peter and Petra. The wedding day will be blah, 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 blah. I don't know. <laughs> and it's like, um, hello? Hello. So Daphne's been like, she hasn't really found herself because she's just, um, followed Peter and done whatever Peter so now she feels alone and all that and like who am I anymore um she upended her life followed Peter back to his hometown and yeah now she's like she has a dream job but also she's like oh I everywhere I turn I see that damn face anyway so on a drunken night, Miles and Daphne decide to just, you know, accept the wedding invitation and be like, oh yeah, and I'll be bringing my new boyfriend. She talks to Peter and says that, and he's like, you don't have a plus one. Oh, that's fine. He has his own invitation. First off, when you've just, like, dumped someone for another someone, why are you inviting them to your new wedding? This just seems mean and cruel because it's not like they ended things on good terms. It was just like, I'm going to go on a holiday for a week so you can pack up and be out of here so I can move in my new girlfriend when we come back. Or fiancé. Like, rude. That That's about the premise of it. They obviously hit it off because it's that kind of book. Um, but <laughs> I really liked it. It was funny um, because at, at one point, so Miles's sister comes into town and kind of moves into their flat and then um, Daphne's dad and his new wife arrives and kind of just like, hello! <laughs> it was a madhouse and I was kind of here for it. It was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. Weird ass premise but I bloody enjoyed it. I bloody enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. We have two authors. It's a book book. <laughs> it's a book book. So we have two authors. We have Augustus who writes like literary fiction. Yeah? Yeah, literary fiction. And then we have January and she writes the romance, the happily ever after kind of fiction. There's a lot of other things involved, but let's just skip to, not the end, but almost <laughs> the middle-ish. So, January happens to find herself in the beach house next to Augustus. So this beach house that belonged to her dad, it's a whole story behind that. I'm not going to go into it because it's just going to be too much. Anyway, she finds herself there. She's, uh, well, she's going to sell the place, but first off, she's, you know, cleaning it up, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> they meet, they interact, they kind of send messages like via notepad through like I, at the window, I guess. The way I pictured it was like that their kitchen window was like this far apart and they were like just writing notes to each other. <laughs> I don't think that's the point, but that was kind of how I saw it when those things happened. Anyway, they write different fiction. They're both in a bit of a rut when it comes to their genre, I suppose. So they decide to 
write <laughs> what the other one writes. So January would write the literary fiction and Augustus would write the romance, the happily ever after kind of thing. I guess that's like the main thing they have where they are like interacting and doing their thing. But then we have like, so they go on like, I guess little dates, little exploration, little gathering info, trips, whatchamacallit. So, research. Did I say that? I don't know. Anyway, they do little research trips um, for whatever. I think we can all kind of guess where this book is leading. So they hit it off. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> speed forward a bit without spoiling it too much, but they finish their book and then they read each other's books on the beach. So, beach read. Except that it's also in a beach house. But they don't go to the beach a lot. I think this is the most, I don't know, real book in a sense. Um, because there's the whole backstory with like on um, like the side plot which January is going through that is super depressing and I felt a bit too close to home at times so yeah mm, wasn't a big fan of that part <laughs> Um, and then some of the bits that Augustus do, like his research parts and stuff, um, that's also a bit depressing, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Ugh. So they have, they have things. <laughs> they have trouble pasts, I guess. Um, so it felt real in that sense and a bit too close to home, which I wasn't a big fan of. So this was the most real slash a bit depressing at times but also I really liked it I didn't like feeling sad but I really liked it the whole concept of it the whole I guess feel good vibe is what I'm aiming at yeah beach read recommend and this one, we follow Harriet. Now, Harriet and her college friends, well, they have this uh, I, I, vacation home, I suppose. They have this cabin, cabin? Cottage, they're calling it a cottage. So, um, one of the friends' family, they have this cottage where um, every year at some time, um, all the friends and their partners have met up in said cottage and, you know, have some fun holiday time. I don't know. I don't know what they did every time. Doesn't matter. Anyway, it's about to be that time again and that's all well and good, but, well, Harriet's ex is there, but the friends don't know they've broken up. So, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Very awkward indeed. So when I said her, Emily Henry has done it again, well, what she's done again is she's written a book that jumps back and forwards in place and time and confused the hell out of me <laughs> again. When I could keep track of the timeline of things, that was all well and good, but I was confused a lot of the time because it skipped time when I was just getting used to the one time we were in and that's... ha. Ah. Listen, sometimes I get really confused really easily, sometimes I don't, sometimes I do, that's just the way of things. And it's not that she didn't write out, it's like the same with the last one, she didn't, It's she wrote out like... I think it was, oh, what was it again? It was like, happy place, unhappy place, present time, wherever they are, yada, 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 the end. So it's not like I shouldn't have been able to <laughs> keep track of things. It was just that because we were jumping back and forth, the timeline for me went Wah! like a big scribble, like a, a really big scribble. The story in itself, 
<laughs> once you remember what's happened and not happened, basically. The story in itself is a good one. There's a bit of a what the hell kind of friends are these moment, but also I get why, but also don't do that. Don't do, don't do that. That is not okay. <laughs> so not okay. Anyway, so it's not going up high for me uh, as far as rating goes, but the writing is good. I will give her that. But the jumping back and forth in time, it's just the confusing the hell out of me. I don't want to be keeping track of that many things. It was too many things. <laughs> <laughs> too many timelines. Now, <laughs> saying that, there are books that I will completely follow the timeline, whether it's jumping back and forth in space or characters or whatnot. I don't know why twice now with Emily Henry I've not been able to keep track. But there we go. There we go. She's a good writer though. Very good. So, all in all, I really like Emily Henry's books. Sure, there were like two of them that wasn't, uh, let's say, wasn't really my thing. Well, it wasn't necessarily that they weren't my thing, it was just that time hops, time jumps, time whatever doesn't seem to work that well for me. Or at least Emily Henry and me didn't seem to be on the same page as it were. And it's fine. I did like all her other books. Definite favourites were Book Lovers and Funny Story, if you haven't already figured that one out. Uh, yeah, so shall I be picking up more? Yeah, if uh, any Emily Henry books come my way, I shall definitely consider them. Um, I didn't have a bad time, even with the time hop time jump books i i did have a really good time and two definite favorites so i call that a win so thank you so much for watching is there an author you think i should do a taste test of um let me know and i shall see you all next time until then take care oh, bye bye